There's an episode of Seinfeld where the ever courageous and occasionally thoughtless Kramer is having trouble with New York City's pools being too crowded. I gotta find a new place to swim. Cause that pool can't hold me, Jerry. Frustrated, he does what many wouldn't even dream of. He decides to swim laps in the East River. But the question remains, can you swim in the New York Harbor? Is it safe? Turns out that you can, and that it is, but it depends on the day. At risk of bragging, our office is literally the southernmost building on Manhattan Island. So all I see out the window is water, but no beaches, no entry points. I had to look into it. I found that today, the water regularly tests safe. People jump in, swim, and reemerge unscathed all the time. Heck, there are even organizations such as Urban Swim and New York Open Water who regularly hold races in it. And even legally, it's fine, as long as you're not entering restricted areas or interfering with boat traffic. In Urban Swim's 10 plus years of staging open water swims, uh, we have fortunately not have a, had a situation where a swimmer has gotten sick from the water. So why all the stigma? What is everyone afraid of? I mean, the history has been that um, in and around Manhattan, companies were dumping chemicals straight into the water. Industrialization was not kind to the New York City Harbor and was even less so to the upper Hudson River. For years following World War II, human waste and trash was thrown straight into the waterways. Chemical pollution, PCBs, heavy metals, and fecal matter choked the water of oxygen, making it uninhabitable for marine life. Factories upriver, namely General Electric, disposed of millions of pounds of toxic chemical compounds, causing a 70-year-long, 200-mile stretch of contaminated water. Over the last four decades, though, industries that once polluted the waterfront have slowly disappeared, and the city has steadily spent $45 billion in total to improve water quality. Further improvements will be made, including upgrading sewage treatment facilities and adding green infrastructure such as green roofs, permeable pavement, and more rainwater catchments to reduce runoff. The goal, everyone feels, is for all of the rainwater to be soaked up, which New York City was never really designed for. The city's Department of Environmental Protection has said that the rivers, harbors, and bays are cleaner now than they have been since the Civil War. Sure, you might occasionally see garbage on the shoreline, but the middle of the waterway, the deepest parts, is pretty darn clean. Think of it as seeing a discarded candy bar wrapper on the beach. Has that ever really stopped you from swimming in the ocean? There's, I think, a lot of fear in just that making the jump into the East River or the Hudson River. Um, but then once you're in there, you realize, okay, it's swimming. I know how to swim. Today, environmental nonprofits regularly check post-storm water quality at 74 different locations. Their test measures, among other things, the levels of salinity, oxygen, temperature, suspended sediment, chlorophyll, and most importantly, entero, a fecal indicator bacteria in the water. And the results have been encouraging. The fact that it is a tidal estuary means that uh, the water washes in and out of the harbor um, on a regular basis. Twice daily, you have uh, the tides. So that definitely um, helps in terms of water quality. The harbor is sort of self-cleaning, if you will. In fact, Atlantic Manhattan, the fish, not the island, have started to show up as well, along with bottlenose dolphins, and humpback whales to eat them. So is the idea of swimming really so unthinkable? Is it safe? Technically and generally it is, but it depends on one big ever-changing thing. How much rain has the city gotten lately? To understand the safety of swimming in the New York City Harbor, it's so essential to understand something called combined sewer overflows. Let's break it down. The majority of the city was built before 1950 and has what's called a combined sewer system. This just means that a single pipe carries both the rainwater runoff and the sewage from buildings. During dry conditions, this isn't a problem. The water is just transported to a wastewater treatment plant. But during heavy rainstorms, overflow can occur and some of the gross untreated water is sent directly into the city's waterfront via sewer outfalls. Annually, more than 20 billion gallons of this nasty overflow is sent back into the harbor which is still a major improvement from 110 billion gallons in 1985. That post-rainstorm overflow includes toxins, oils, bacteria, and street garbage, so it's definitely not a good idea to swim for the next 48 hours. But if it's been dry for the past few weeks, and it's a nice day, 
that's up to you. In organizing the swim around the Statue of Liberty, most people breathe to their left. So as you're swimming around, you're always looking up the statue. You're seeing her from the water, you're seeing her from behind, from the front. Like I'm, I'm getting chills just talking about it. It is so exciting because you're seeing it from a different perspective. Uh, one that you can't get from a boat, one that you can't get from the land. It's hard to describe, but it is, it's magical for me anyway. As for the future of swimming in New York's harbors, only time will tell. When people start to think about the recreational possibilities of the water in and around their city, then they start to care. It's like, if I'm gonna swim in that, I, I, I wanna know, I wanna know what's going on. And then once you learn what's going on, then what can I do about it?